this is your first time, no need to worry. Tubing those two loops is a succession of simple steps. We will start with our first loop, the one responsible to keep our GPU cool. Starting from the pump, our loop will transit through the reservoir. Then we'll go to our video card, then from the video card via the bridge to its 480mm radiator, and then finally back to the pump. We will also add a valve so that we can drain the loop if necessary. Before tubing, we are going to install all the fittings necessary to our first loop. As I start with our pump, you will see on the bottom right of your screen in green the detail assembly of the fitting and in blue the overall progress view of our computer. When securing your fitting, make sure not to over tight it. Finger tight is more than enough. Also, I like to keep the compression fittings on the extension as I install them. It's good practice, it's a good way to keep track of them through the build. But you'll see I don't always do it, so it really is up to you. Keep in mind that I am using different brands of fitting together. Just as long as they have the same measurements, they should fit in and work together perfectly. The different elements that I am assembling really represent what works best for this particular build and also is a reflection of my personal taste. But please feel free to come up with your own design, I think this is a big part of the fun uh, in building a custom water cooling system. For the rest, simply follow the instructions on your screen and remember to go slow. As its names indicate, the bridge is here to connect the element we're trying to cool to its radiator intake. On the lower right corner of your screen, you can see all the different elements that I've used for this particular bridge. And again, this is only indicative and feel free to change the design to best fit your own build. On this particular bridge, I have added two nice little features which will be very useful to us. One is a valve so that we can easily drain this particular loop and the second feature is a thermo sensor which will allow us to easily monitor the temperature of our cooling liquid. Once done with its assembly and before the tubing takes place, I am positioning the bridge through the second cable hole so that its longest extremity would face the GPU output compression fitting. Once done, simply let it rest and let's move on to the tubing. For your tubing, you will need compression fittings. In short, they are here to connect your hardware components to your tubing. There are simple elements. On one side you will have a barb and on the other a compression ring. And as you must have already guessed it, you will need two compression fittings for every tube you want to make. Once measured and cut, take your tube and press it onto the compression fitting barb. Be careful, this might require some effort. Once done, simply screw back the compression ring into place. The secret to have a perfect seal between the barb and the tube is to have a 100% adherence between the tube extremity and the base of the barb. If you can get it all around, then you can be pretty sure that your tubing will be leak free. Alright, so that's that. Let's move on on actually tubing our loop together. As you can see, I am removing first the compression fittings, I measure how much tube I need and then finally connect both elements with the finalized tube. Here we just connected our GPU output to our bridge. Next step is to connect the other side of our bridge to the intake of our 480mm radiator. Following the same principle, we are going to measure and prepare a tube to connect both elements. Next step is to connect our radiator output to our pump intake. Let's not forget that on the next video we will need to fit in there the power supply unit. Therefore a very good idea to give it a little bit more tube than necessary. Okay. 
Okay, so here's our valve. Um, you can keep it like this, it'll work just fine to drain the loop if necessary, but you can also do the extra mile and what I'm doing right now, which means add an extension, a little bit more tubing and put the valve at the very extremity of that tube. When operating the valve, remember that the shutter is in plastic, plastic over metal. If you're not careful enough, you'll probably break it, so go easy on it. Also, the central module of our casing is completely hollow, so the perfect place to hide our draining tube. Alright, let's keep going. Now let's connect the reservoir output to our video card intake. The last step on the second loop, let's connect our pump outlet to our reservoir inlet. Easy peasy. All right, let's move on. As in the first loop, the second loop will start with the pump to the reservoir, then reservoir to the CPU, CPU to the bridge, bridge to our 360 mm radiator, and finally from the 360 mm radiator back to our pump. Let's not forget our draining valve as done in the previous loop. By now you should know what to do and how to do it, so I'm simply going to kick it back and let you enjoy the music. Worth noting, this is the intake of our CPU water block. Once you have assembled and put on the extension element of our CPU intake, simply let it go down and rest. We will have a tube later on which will support its weight and bring it upward. The CPU water block outlet is a little bit simpler, so let's just put it on and move on onto the bridge assembly. Exactly as we've done on the first loop, we are going to assemble a very similar bridge. Only noticeable difference is that it is a little bit shorter when it comes to extension, but for the rest it is rigorously the same. Take your time and make sure that all the pieces are solidly secured with one another. Remember, finger tight is enough. Again, as done previously, we are going to put in place our second bridge. I am going to use the first cable hole on our build and just let it rest in position until we start the tubing. In addition, I am going to add the extensions and compression fittings to the 360mm radiator. I should have done that before and I completely forgot about it. Anyways, let's move on to the tubing. Again, you know exactly what to do, so simply follow the instructions on your screen and let's enjoy some boom opera music. Again, as done previously, we can leave the valve as is, but my favorite option would be to add an extension if you have any and the extra tube for ease of use. I really like the mix between metal and liquid and that's what I went for obviously on this build. And there are a lot of fittings and extensions that were not necessary but because I wanted to have this metal slash water interaction I did add them anyways. And the connection between the reservoir and the CPU intake as shown on your screen is a prime example of what I'm talking about. You have to find the right balance between what is easier and what looks the best. And that last tube which connects the outlet of our CPU block to the bridge also illustrates what I'm trying to say. <laughs> 